Kia ora guys and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max and I'm the host over here at this channel. A big thank you to my patrons and for today's video we are going to break down who's been named in the Springboks 2023 Rugby World Cup squad. South Africa are the defending champions under their current head coach Jacques Nienaba who was an assistant for 2019. His win rate so far with them is 63% and this is a bit of an ageing squad so this could really go either one or two ways. The Springboks have the potential to cause absolute heartache for their fan base or become rugby's greatest team of all time, especially considering the 2019 edition made a huge comeback after Alistair Kotzea's 44% win rate as the head coach. I'm not going to waste any further time, let's break down who's made the team and why they're in there, and of course I'll share a few thoughts at the end of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy it, and let's get right into this. After what was a rather long announcement, Joseph Dweber has been dumped from the team first off hooker. Dion Forey is going to be the Skulk Brits of 2023, the oldest ever Springbok debutant is getting a go at the World Cup just one year after his test debut. Malcolm Marks and Bongi Mbanambi are both key members of the leadership group. Mbanambi recently debuted for them as captain to get his 60th test cap, so they were pretty obvious picks considering Marks is a former nominee for World Player of the Year. As for the props, no change at all, apart from Ox and Chair being back from injury. Excellent, timely boost for one of the fan favourites, Stephen Kitzoff world class, Trevor Inyakani world class, Franz Malherber world class, Vincent Koch world class, perfect stuff. The locks though, this is where we start to get into the huge surprises. Luz Diaga, a veteran of two world cups, a champion in 2019, a winner of the 2021 Lions tour, has been omitted from the team. Jean Klein, who played five tests for Ireland in 2019, has well and truly made his mark returning home to South Africa and has been picked for a second Rugby World Cup. Franco Mostert though, he remains in the team to cover lock and blindside flanker, which is very good to cover Peter Steff Dutoy. Marvin Ori has also been picked in the team and he's starting to fill quite a nice combination with Jean Klein, I actually do think, and RG Snayman, one of the greatest comeback stories ever, over two years worth of missed rugby due to repeated injuries over and over. I wrote him off and I'm so happy to have been wrong. I'm very glad to see him back. An excellent inspirational story. I thought it was over. He is back proving people wrong. He is fit. He is lean. He is ready for action. I'm so happy to see this really wholesome news. As for the loose forwards, Peter Steff Dutoy, who I mentioned before. Come on guys, he was always going to be picked. World Player of the Year for 2019 and starting to look back to his best again, very pleasing for him. Quagga Smith remains in there as a great open side flanker. He performed very strongly in the Rugby Championship and with Sia Khaleesi, the captain, just about to come back from injury, um, Quagga Smith may definitely be needed at Twickenham right before the World Cup in particular. Marco van Staden is another option to cover Khaleesi off the bench if Khaleesi doesn't quite have the full fitness Van Staden can play number eight, so that'll be very interesting to see his versatility used in the pool stages though. I don't know if they'll 100% need it though because they do have two specialist number eights. Father Time is not yet caught up with Dwayne Vermeulen who is here for a third World Cup at 37 years old. Jasper Visa I'm expecting fully to be the starter in the jersey though. It is his time now but with the old dog teaching lessons to the rest of the pack, Visa can just be relaxed to do his thing and wreak havoc as a ball carrier. As for the backs though, why do you need Need three scrum halves. I'll get on to this later, but there's Faf de Klerk who was always going to go. Jaden Hendrickson will be recovering from injury. Grant Williams can cover 9 and 10, so perhaps that offsets the absence of Andre Pollard who is going to miss the tournament due to injury, which is absolutely gutting. 665 test points right there. But it's okay, Corpus Reinach's experience will be able to help guide Williams if he does get stuck playing 10 in the pool stage. Reinach can cover wings, so it's a bit of an unknown over there as well, especially considering there are four wingers in this Springbok squad. Fly halves, Marnie Lebok and Damien Willemse is what South Africa will have to do without Pollard. No recall for Elton Yanchis, and Herschel Yanchis at halfback also isn't there. Lebok has really started controlling the team as of late. He needs the absolute maximum amount of game time before this tournament. Do not ever sub the guy off. This has to keep going. See my computer? It agrees with me. Do not sub off Lebok. The midfielders though. 
massive area of concern. I've repeatedly said this before this World Cup, and with Lucanio arm now sadly ruled out due to injury, what's going to happen? Do you start Damien Dialendi and Andre Esterhazen with Dialendi at 13, or do you go for Dialendi at 12 and Jesse Creel at 13? It's going to be a very interesting move because Dialendi and Creel will both be going there, sorry, to their third World Cup. Andre Esterhazen, he's a guy who a lot of people said was robbed in 2019, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this mix goes on, especially with Kane and Moody available. Is Kane and Moody going to be considered as a centre? I think this squad naming is genuinely like given us more questions than it has answers for the back line. Marcus Olima Pimpi, Cheslin Colby, Kurtley, Aronza, a man on absolute fire what right now. We know where they sit in. They were always going to be picked. Come on. Aronza got seven tries from his first seven tests. And Vili LaRue, 86 test caps. He was also always going to go. Maybe he could even be the guy coming up to play at fly half. We've seen him being the first receiver in several strike plays, so overall, what do I think of the squad? I'm very pleased to see Jacques Nienaba cut out some dead weight. The squad's not too old anymore, I don't think. Now, it's looking a little bit more balanced for the World Cup, and I think that'll be very good for the psyche of the team to freshen up that game plan, which has been looking very stale. I want to wish South Africa very good luck for this World Cup, because they are in the pool of death. They're going to need some real strong performances, and Marnie Lebok in particular, I have faith in him that he can step up in the first receiver role as fly half for the Springboks. Thank you very much for watching this video. Video guys, it is 1:45 a.m. here in New Zealand. I'm gonna edit this. Thing. I'm gonna edit this thing rather really quickly. Get my sleep. Just make sure you support me over on Instagram and over on Threads as well. And I will catch you in the next video. Cheers, guys, from Max.